Hi everyone, welcome to chapter five. You all did great on the exam. Um, I hope you're feeling a little more confident. Keep working hard. Chapter five has some really important topics as, all, as do all the chapters. I wanna spend this time just going over a few of the more important problems. So this chapter is all about cost behavior. You will be using the concepts from this chapter for the rest of the semester. So make sure you understand it. If you don't understand it, get with me and I'll help you. So the biggest thing in this chapter is being able to distinguish variable costs, fixed costs, and mixed costs. So the thing about variable costs is they increase as activity increase. In this example, they're talking about the number of the cost of coffee beans and the number of coffee drinks served. The more coffee drinks you serve, the more coffee beans you need. This is called a linear relationship. That's per total variable cost. Per unit variable cost remains the same within a relevant range of activity over the number of drinks served. So I serve 2,000, 4,000, up to 10,000 drinks. My per unit cost for coffee beans is still 50 cents per unit. But in total, it's going to be um, increasing. Fixed costs are the exact opposite. They remain the same in total, and they change per unit. So. Fixed costs, like the cost of rent, remains 5,000 no matter how many drinks I serve, within a relevant range, of course, and you can read about that. The per unit cost of rent goes down the more drinks I serve. So I'm spreading the cost over a bigger number of drinks. And then mixed costs contain a portion of fixed and mixed. So the fixed cost remain the same no matter what. Variable costs start where the fixed costs leave off and they increase per unit. So this is a mixed cost. It has a variable or it has a fixed portion and a variable portion. And that's pretty common. The mixed costs increase as activity increases and then the total mixed cost. And then the per unit mixed cost goes down the more units you produce. So I just wanted to give you that overview of the costs. What we're really talking about here on the, and we'll get into this in a little bit, but on the mixed cost, what we're talking about is an equation that's actually the slope of a line. And we'll be using that in the future. So. But let's, let's do a couple of examples on fixed and mixed cost. Okay, here's a problem from your textbook, identifying cost behavior. So we have a kettle corn company and they've given you some information. And on these problems, you wanna make sure that you read the problem itself. Don't just look at the table. So they have fixed expenses at total 400 per week and the variable cost for per bag of popcorn is 50 cents. And they want you to complete this table for the various activity levels for one week. The number of bags of popcorn, 500, 1,000, 1,500. So my total fixed costs remain the same no matter how many units, right? Think about the behavior of fixed costs. So my total fixed cost is $400 per week, no matter what. So that remains the same no matter how many bags of popcorn I sell. So the fixed cost per bag of popcorn, so I want to take my cost and I want to divide it by the number of bags of popcorn. So I want to take this $400 fixed cost and I want to divide it by the number of bags of popcorn. That gives me a fixed cost per bag of 80 cents. And if I do the same thing at each level, the cost divided by 
the number of bags, the cost divided by the number of bags. You can see that the total fixed cost remains the same, but the fixed cost per bag decreases the more I produce. So the total variable cost would be the variable cost per bag times the number of bags. So 50 cents. So 50 cents times the number of bags. So my total variable cost is 250 when I produce or when I sell 500 bags. My total variable cost is 50 cents times a, oops. 50 cents times 1,000 or 500, and my variable cost for 1,500 bags is 50 cents times 1,500 or 750. But my variable cost per bag is always 50 cents. So total variable costs increase as my activity increases and the variable cost per unit remains the same. My total cost would be the fixed cost plus the total variable cost. And I can do that for each column. So my fixed cost plus my total variable cost. My fixed cost plus my total variable cost. So my total cost increases the more I sell because I do have that variable component. The total cost per bag of popcorn, so I take my total cost and I divide it by the number of bags. And if I do that for all three, you can see that my total cost per bag decreases the more bags I produce because my fixed cost does not increase. This is a very simple example that kind of shows you the cost behavior. Okay, let's do another one. Let's do M510. I have nine in here because we're going to use the information from nine. I'm not asking you to prepare a scatter graph. This one talks about the high-low method. How do we separate fixed from mixed? So we have these costs here, and we're asked to use the high-low method and calculate the fixed cost per month and the variable cost per month. So they just put in the total costs and the number of appointments. And we need to know how much of that cost is fixed and how much is variable and what is the variable cost. <coughs> Excuse me. So the high-low method is based on the high and the low months, the number of appointments, not cost, the number. So our high month would be March. So that has the most number of appointments at 500. So March has 500 appointments with a total cost of 6,200. The low month would be, let's see, May with a total cost of 150, or with a total number of appointments of 150, and the total cost of 5,450. So we've, we've, pulled out our high and low. The formula would be the difference in total cost over the difference in activity. And that gives a, us a variable cost per unit. And once we know that, we can do a lot with it. So the difference in total cost would be, I'm going to type these in here because I want you to see what I'm doing, 6,200 minus 5450. So that's the difference in total cost, 6200 minus 5450. Over the difference in activity, which is 500 minus 150. 
And that works out to be 750, so 6,200 minus 5,450 over 500 minus 150. And this is not dollars, sorry. Unfortunately, I put dollars in there. Should not be. Um, so $750 is the difference in cost and 350 appointments is the difference in appointments over high to low. The variable cost would then be 750 divided by 350. And we're going to round this. We're going to round this down to two decimal places, which is $2.14. And that's $2.14 per appointment. So now we know the variable cost that's included in this total cost component. Now, we use that variable cost to pull out the fixed cost. This is the formula. Fixed cost equals total cost minus variable cost per unit times the activity. Okay, so our total cost would be We're going to do it so you can do this at either the high or the low level. So we're going to we're going to look at it at the high level. So 6,200 minus and again I'm typing this in here because I want you to see the formula. 214 two dollars and fourteen cents times five hundred. That's the formula. That works out to be 6,200 minus 1,070. And that works out to be 5,130 is our fixed cost. So now we know that we have this and we'll talk in a little bit, we'll talk about this formula. We can use this information to calculate the cost on any given month because we have the fixed component and we have the variable component. Okay. Let's do one more. So high-low months, um, high-low method, we're going to take the high and the low. This is a company that makes hats, and they've put, given the number of hats and the total cost. We're asked to calculate the total fixed cost per month and the variable cost per hat. It's just easier. you got to do the variable first, so we'll do the variable one first. So look for our high month, 8,600, April. Number of hats in April is 8,600. Total cost of 77.50. The low month would be, looks like 3,000 in July. So July, 3,000, with a total corresponding cost of 42.50. So difference in cost over difference in activity. So that would be difference in cost, 77.50 minus 42.50 over 8,600 minus 3,000. Okay. And that would be 3,500 over 5,600. OK. 
Keep carrying that down. So my total variable cost is 3,500 divided by 5,600 or 63 cents. And in these things, you probably want to increase your decimal place to three. And watch what it says in the homework. It'll tell you, round your intermediate calculations or don't round them. It'll tell you how to handle that. So then the fixed cost is the total cost minus the variable cost times the activity. And we can do it at either the high or the low. We're going to do it at the high just because that, that's just the habit I've gotten into. Sometimes you'll get a different number at the low because of rounding. So we're going to take 77.50 total cost minus the variable cost per unit, which was 0.625, times the activity, which at the high level is, what, 8,600. Okay. So that would be 77.50. Minus, oops, let's just do it this way. I'm going to calculate off to the side simply because I'm doing this so you can see the formulas. 8600 times 0 0.625 is 5375. So 77.50 minus 53.75. So then the fixed cost would be 77.50 minus 53.75. Oops. Or 23.75. So now we have a formula again. We've got the fixed cost. The formula is um, total cost minus the variable cost times the activity. So we've pulled out the fixed and we've pulled out the variable. And now we can calculate. Okay, let's do E54 now. In this one, we're going to calculate, determine how the costs behave, and calculate and estimate our expected costs. So we have this company that produces a bird bath. They sell everything it produces each month. The relevant range is 0 to 1,500 units. That means we don't expect fixed costs to change within that relevant range. Monthly production costs for the production of 500 units follow. This is important information. It's monthly and it's 500 units. Their utilities and maintenance costs are mixed with fixed components. So we've got direct materials, direct labor, utilities with some fixed portion, supervisor salary, maintenance with some fixed portion, and depreciation. We're asked to identify each cost as variable, fixed, or mixed. And how, what is the cost rate per month or per unit or combination? So let's start with direct materials. Direct materials is always a variable cost. And I actually have it in here for you. Let me just take this out so we can talk our way through it. So that's always a variable cost. And what's the rate? How much is the variable cost per unit? Well, if we have um, direct materials of $1,500 that produces five units, $1,500 divided by, or produces 500 units, divided by 500 is $3 per unit. So the rate is $3 per unit, which is 1,500 divided by 500. Direct labor is always variable as well. How much is the variable rate? Well, that's 7,500 in direct labor for 500 units. 
So 7,500 divided by 500 units gives us $15 per unit. Okay, so it's $15 per unit. And that formula was 7,500 divided by 500. Utilities has a fixed and a variable component. If 100 of, us, of it is fixed, so our utilities is 650 minus 100. That gives us 550 for the variable component. We're going to take that 550 and we're going to divide it by 500 units. That's $1.10 per unit. So it's 110 per unit, which is 550 divided by 500. But it's also 100 per month fixed. Let me put some dollar signs in here so you understand that we're calculating a cost per unit. Supervisor salary, so utilities was mixed because it had a fixed and a variable portion. Supervisor salary, salaries are always fixed. How much is that per month? <clears throat> well, it's, they gave it to us, it's 3,000 per month. Maintenance, again, it has a fixed portion. So the total is 480. If the fixed portion is 280, that leaves 480 minus 280. That leaves 200 of it for variable costs. We take that 200 and we divide it by the 500 units. And that gives us 40 cents per unit variable cost. So this is mixed, 0 0.40 per unit, variable, and 280 per month, fixed. Depreciation is always fixed. And so the depreciation is $800 per month. Okay. So now that we've analyzed these costs, they've asked us to determine the total fixed cost per month and the variable cost per unit. So the total fixed cost per month include the fixed portion of utilities, which is 100. Supervisor salary, all of that is fixed, 3000 Maintenance has a fixed portion of 280 And depreciation is all fixed at 800 That gives us our total fixed cost of 4180 The variable cost per unit for direct materials is $3. Direct labor is $15. Um, the variable portion of the utilities is $1.10. The variable portion of the maintenance is $0.40. Cents. That gives us a variable cost per unit of $19.50. Our cost equation says our total costs are equal to our fixed cost plus our variable cost times the number of units. So this is our cost equation. What does the cost equation for this company look like? That cost equation looks like this. And again, I'm not putting formulas. I want you to see what I'm doing. So our cost equation looks like this. 
41, well, let's do it this way. Total cost equals 4180, which is our total fixed cost, plus our variable cost times the number of units. So our variable cost is 1950 times a number of units. They told us calculate their, their total cost if production increased to 1,200 units per month. So instead of 500, it's 1,200. So we want to multiply this times 1,200. And we want to multiply that first. So put that in parentheses. So this is our cost formula. If we were to work that out, our total cost is going to be equal to 27,580 dollars. So what we did is we went through and classified everything separated the mixed and fixed, and we didn't have to use the high-low method because they told us what portion was fixed. So we could back into the mixed, or the, the variable. So we did that, then we added up our fixed cost per month, we added up our variable cost per unit, we created our cost equation, and we applied our cost equation. So if our production increased to 1,200 units per month, our total cost would be $27,580. So that's called a linear approach to estimate cost behavior. It's where Y is the total cost, A is the intercept, which is in our case fixed cost, and B is the slope of the line, or in our case the variable cost per unit of activity, and X being the activity. That's, a that's called a linear approach to estimate cost behavior, which we just used. There's a scatter graph method. There's three different basic methods. A scatter graph, and they'll walk you through creating this in the textbook if you want to try it. It's a useful first step, but it's a big picture thing. It doesn't give us too much data. Then there's the high-low method, which is what we have just used, which is the variable cost per unit and the intercept and the total fixed cost. And then there's the most accurate method, which is least squares regression. It's a statistical technique. You can look in the textbook. They'll walk you through doing it in Excel step by step. So you can try it if you like. You're not going to have to do least squares or scatter graph for assignments. Least squares regression comes in the course after this if you go on in cost accounting. Oops. So I want to talk about the contribution margin approach here. This is the second important thing in this chapter. A contribution margin takes the sales revenue and subtracts the variable costs and comes up with something called a contribution margin. That contribution margin is what's left to contribute to covering fixed costs. That's, that's why it's called a contribution margin. This is a very useful slide in that this is a good setup. If you can do this setup for contribution margin, you can solve anything with these numbers. There's formulas. A contribution margin equals the sales revenue minus the variable cost, and the contribution margin ratio has a formula. You don't need to memorize formulas. You just need to know how to set this up. And we'll do some examples of this. So what they're doing on here is they have a total column, they have a per unit column, and they have a percentage of sales column. So on E55, 
we are calculating contribution margin and contribution margin ratio and preparing the contribution margin income statement. This seems very simple, and it is, but I want you to remember how to do this because we're going to need this heavily in a different chapter. It asked us to refer to the information for the Morning Dove Company in E54. That's why I have this over here because it gives us this information about the bird bath and the production of 500 units, the one we just did back here, this one. And we'll use that information. We're asked to prepare um, a contribution margin income statement. And I just noticed my formatting is terrible here. So I can't stand it, I have to fix it. Cannot stand it, I have to fix it. Oh, well, that's what happens when you try to fix things on the run. Just do it the long way. Okay. So we're going to create a contribution margin income statement. That's sales minus variable costs equals contribution margin less fixed cost equals net operating income. First, we're going to do it in total, and then we're going to do it per unit, and then we're going to do the contribution margin ratio. They asked you to calculate the unit contribution margin and contribution margin ratio first. Just prepare the statement. You can answer any questions with that statement. So our sales revenue in total, they sell the bird bass for $25. How many bird bass did they sell? This is expected for 1,400 units. So we're going to take 1,400 units times $25. That gives us 35,000 total sales revenue. What's the variable cost? Well, we're gonna go back over here and our variable cost per unit was 1950. We're gonna use that number. So here we're going to put 1400, that's the number of units we're selling, times 1950. That gives us variable costs of 27,300. That makes our contribution margin 7,700. We subtract our fixed costs. And if you remember, this is they had some mixed costs here. So we calculated the fixed cost back here at 4180. 4180. That makes my net operating income, which is 7,700, minus the fixed cost of 4180, makes my net operating income 3,520. How much is that per unit? Well, the sales revenue per unit is $25. The variable cost per unit was $19.50, I think. Yes, $19.50. That makes the contribution margin per unit equal to $5.50. In the per unit in the in the um, percentage of sales column, I'm going to put this as percentage of sales because I think it helps um, helps you to understand what it means. So the percentage the per unit and the percentage of sales columns we only do down to the contribution margin. We don't do it with fixed cost or net operating income. So the percentage of sales is everything is divided by sales. So $25 divided by $25 is 100%. $19.50 divided by $25 is 78%. Now we could just subtract these two to come up with the contribution margin ratio, or we can go ahead and take 550 divided by $25 and come up with 22% contribution margin ratio. Later on, we will do a lot of things with these numbers. So be sure you know how to calculate those numbers. 
And that's all I have for you for this chapter. I didn't want to spend a lot of time going over slides and all of that because you can read the book and, and look at everything. What I wanted to do was point out the things that were the most important for you to get fixed in your brain. Thanks. Have a great week.